What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Happy new release today, guys. 21-22 Panini Hoops Basketball is here. This is a five-box break. Two random teams each. Number one. As you can see, number two is already uploaded to the website. This is break number one. 15 total spots. Everybody gets two random teams in the NBA and all cards ship. So there you go. Jason Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green, Josh Giddy. A lot of big, uh, big rookies from 21-22. So, here's the dice roller, guys. Here's the cousin of names. So, we doubled up your names from Brian down to Kevin. And then from the Hawks down to the Wizards. Let's roll the dice. And we got ourselves a 3 and a 6 for 9 times. Good luck. 1. 2. 3. 4. 5. 6. 7. 8. And 9. Three and a six nine times. Jason down to Andrew. Alright. Three and a six nine times. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. And nine. Brooklyn Nets down to the Indiana Pacers. All right, so Jason with the Nets, Corey with the Lakers, Daniel with the Pelicans, Derek with the Clippers, Jake with the Magic, Steven with the Pistons, Eric with the Hornets, Steven with the 76ers, Kevin with the Mavericks, Brian with the Hawks, Michael with the Bulls, Derek Gordon with the Warriors, uh, Derek with the Celtics, Andrew with the Nuggets, Corey with the Cavs, Barry with the Jazz, Kevin with the Thunder, Josh Giddy time, last spot mojo, Thunder up, Eric with the Bucks and Wizards, Derek with the Spurs, Daniel with the Heat, Jason with the Suns, Michael with the Kings, Brian with the Knicks, Raptors, Rockets, Rockets of course have Jalen Green, Jake with the Blazers, EA with the Grizzlies, Barry with the T-Wolves, and Andrew with the Indiana Pacers. So again, I'll give you guys a, a minute or so, I know if, if some people are watching, they're just like, what the hell, what draft picks do we have? Um, I'll pull up the 21, 22 NBA draft. Of course, Evan Mobley for the Cavs is a big one. Scotty Barnes for the Raptors. Jalen Suggs, Magic. Josh Giddey at number six. Kaminga. I know Davion Mitchell for the Kings was a pretty popular player. Now, the question is, let's see what rookies have autographs here. So they pretty much have all the big rookies. Now, they do have base tribute premium box set autographs. So they have Luke autographs, Bill Russell, Anthony Davis, Allen Iverson, John Morant, Stephen Curry, Trey Young, Anthony Edwards. Um, so I'm trying to see what inks they have for the rookies. Hot signatures. Hot signature rookie. So they do have Cade Cunningham, but he's not in the parallel cards. Just base it looks like. Yeah, they pretty much have all the big rookies. Nice. They do definitely have all the big rookies. All right, if you guys want the checklist, here it is right there. And let's close the trade window, guys. I'm pretty sure people are not going to trade. Probably not too many people watching at this early hour. They probably think we're not live till 3.
Alright, so I do have that there. So remember, a case of hoops is 20 boxes, and it's a little heavy case. So we'll be able to do at least four group breaks with a whole case. And the one thing about hoops is that's kind of cool is uh, I don't think they're specifically case hits, per se. Hoops is more treated like like a retail, per se, because it's 20 boxes in a case. It's like a lot. So, you know, there is possibility of hitting multiple big rookies. And I'm going to split them up into one, two, three, four, five boxes each. That way we can have four breaks worth. I'm trying to move this out of the way. So there we go. One, two, three, four. If I roll a five or a six, we'll just re-roll till we get one of those numbers again. Four. One, two, three, four. So we're gonna go with that far right five boxes. And I'm just gonna put a little line through these so you guys know they're from the same case. And I'll put three lines. We'll just grab randomly from each stack as we do some of these breaks. All right. Hobby exclusive. All right, guys. Good luck. So we'll kind of take this box a little slow to start us off. Just kind of enjoy a brand new one. Kaminga. So I don't have a specific list to top load. Uh, besides, obviously, some of the bigger names. And there's your hot signatures. Benoit Benjamin. Uh, this is the first official release of the 2020 uh 21-22 draft class in their NBA uniforms. So it's a big deal. But it's also a pretty inexpensive box price, at least compared to last year's. I think it's only like a two hundred dollar box. Alright. Let's continue on. Luka Doncic, Hoopla, Isaiah Todd. And 
And we have to 75, Malcolm Brogdon. We have Luca Garza. Like I said, I don't really know. I'm going to see if we can get a list of who we're top loading and who we're not. But I'll try to just put aside the bigger names, the top draft picks. Kai Jones. There's Giddy. Definitely. Top draft pick right there. For my Thunder. Sharif Cooper. Scotty Barnes. Looks pretty nice. It doesn't, the quality seems much better. Cards look kind of sharp so far. Jalen Suggs. Uh, don't think so, Riley. If it's not here on our website, you can check on jaspies.com for personals. Prime time, or prime twine, I should say. LeBron James. But yeah, it looks pretty nice so far. Little road to the finals, Luka Doncic. Quinn Grimes. Al Horford. Lamelo, second year. Uh, well, definitely the top two are going to be probably Cade Cunningham and Jalen uh, Jalen Smith. I feel like um, I know Evan Mobley was a pretty big one when uh, draft picks came out. Chronicles. But uh, Josh Giddy has pretty much emerged himself as one of the top top five at least. I mean, he's I know he was drafted number six, but I feel like he's probably gonna sell for more than maybe Scotty Barnes with the Raptors and Jalen Suggs with the Magic. So he can probably be a pretty top draft pick. That'll sell pretty well. I know Davion Mitchell was a nice popular pick too that people liked for the Kings, but definitely I've if I had to say definitely. Uh, those guys too, but I mean all the top draft picks I think will all sell because well, this is gonna be the first time they're signing in their official uniforms, you know. But I'm just a homer. I like I like Josh Giddy a lot, so I'm gonna put him up there. But definitely Jalen uh, Green and Cade Cunningham for sure. Those guys are the one and two. High voltage Giannis, and there's a Cade Cunningham right there. Yeah, well, like I said, when when Chronicles draft picks released, everybody was obviously chasing Cade, chasing uh, Mobley, chasing Jalen Green. Uh, you can throw in Scotty Barnes in there. You can throw in, you know, uh, Giddy. Uh, so it's pretty much almost the same top five, right? Cade Cunningham was one. Jalen was two. Three was Evan Mobley. Scotty Barnes, four. Jalen sucks, five. And then Josh Giddy six. Kaminga was a pretty popular one, too. People like Davion Mitchell, I remember. Um... Moises Moody was one people like to uh, chase right there. Um, you know, I think it all changes throughout the course of the year. And especially as products tend to continue to release. But, yeah. Wendell Carter Jr. 199. And is this a rookie scoring leaders, Anthony Edwards? Uh, do we only get one autograph for a box in this? Yeah, we only get one, huh? I feel like in years past there was two autographs. No? Wasn't there two autographs in in hoops? I want to say there was. 
I mean, it's wild. Before the before the pandemic, you know, 1920 hoops was like a hundred dollar box. You know, Zion, John Morant rookie year. Then the pandemic happened, the boom happened, and then quickly jumped from like a hundred dollar box to like eight hundred dollars. And then obviously last year's hoops was like I think five six hundred dollars to start off. Now it probably kind of makes sense that this is a two hundred dollar box because there's only one autograph. If they did have two autographs, it'd probably still be like a four or five hundred dollar box. But yeah, it was usually like one veteran and one rookie. So it probably makes sense why it's starting off like at a two hundred dollar box. There's only one autograph to chase, which still is relatively cheap though compared to uh, compared to uh, other products, you know. I have no idea, Jack. I know they're trying to release Cup Hockey by early February. They still have to release, like, you know, they still have to release, like, Cup. I think they still haven't released, like, I feel like I haven't seen SPA yet either, right? They're, they're, they're a bit behind, too. I know they were having manufacturing issues. So, like, you know, Panini, who's a bigger company... You know, tops and those ones that produce a lot more products. I, I think they were able to bypass their manufacturing issues and speed up the process. Probably pay up. But I think, you know, Upper Deck having to cancel certain products so they couldn't get it out in time. You know, it just shows you that they probably don't have the same manufacturing structure. But I was hearing that Cup was supposed to be coming out early February. Um, I know on the release calendar... I don't know if it even shows it in Blowout anymore, but it did show it in Blowout like a month or so ago. I don't think so. I, I, I think of Hoops as more of a retail box. I know it's hobby. Don't tell me. I mean, I'm not trying to say it's not a retail box or not a hobby box, but 20 boxes in a case, it doesn't seem like there is a case hit. I, I'm, I'm thinking of it as like, you know, fast break basketball where there's 20 boxes in a case, you know, hybrid, there's 20 boxes in a case. I'm sure what there is is whoever's the big rookie hit is the case hit, but there's no specific case hit that I know of. An insert or a, or a specific card that you're chasing. I think it's all pretty pretty much the same. I know people think there is case hits and everything, but not necessarily. What people try to tend to say is that the case hit is probably the biggest hit of the card. Biggest, uh, part of the of the product in the case Aaron Wiggins but not to my knowledge at least not that I know of Josh Giddy dude's a great passer man Josh Giddy that dude is wild and it looks like some of these cards are a little dinged up from the pack that specific pack at least everything else looks fine Miles McBride, Luka Doncic, rookie Jalen Johnson, purple, Zaire Williams, Moises Moody, Chris Duarte from my Ducks right there, and ooh, look at that, Evan Mobley. Rookie ink to start us off in the second box. Very, very nice. Who has the caps? Corey. There you go. Very nice. Oops, Jason Tatum. We got a James Harden. Hoopla. I think it's this hoopla. Franz Wagner. Jokic, Road to the Finals.
Larry Bird, Cade Cunningham, Greg Brown, Tribute of the Magic Johnson. We got a PG to one ninety nine. And also, do they still have red backs on these? I think they still do have red backs. I'm gonna have to check them. There you go. There's a red back right there. John Moran red back. I just remembered actually. Let me double check these ones really quick. So there might be one red back per box. Well, that's what they want for it, right, Mark? It doesn't mean it's going to sell for that. I think everybody's listing high. Of course, hoping someone bites. Just another way to add another variation to the web to the checklist, Joe P. You know how it is. They've been doing this for years, so. I want to make sure I didn't hit a red back rookie, did I? So just those two red backs so far. On oh, Pizzle, you know this already? You know this man? Jalen Suggs. Third box, third. Oh, Suns. I'm going to go see uh, John Moran on Sunday, actually. He's got some nice premier level tickets to go see Ja LeBron at the Crypto. Playing at the Crypt. <laughs> Ooh, 
Go Cards, go Niners. Oh, yeah, for your sake, right? Need the Niners to win. Cade. Jalen. Nice, Sam. That's awesome. Yeah, the Clippers play at noon, I think, against the uh, Hawks. And then uh, Lakers play against the Grizzlies uh, on Sunday night. Always wanted to see Jaws, so might as well, right? Clay, I know. I heard he was returning on Sunday, right? It's going to be fun. And we have a green to 99, DeAndre Jordan. No, 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 not courtside. I'll be sitting in premier level, though. I'll have a good view of the game, but no. <laughs> I think I'm in PR3, like row one or two. Uh, a customer of ours on, um, on Instagram... Uh, actually has the whole premier level package. So he has games to the Clippers, Lakers, Kings, Sparks. And so anytime I try to go to a game, I always just hit him up. I think he still does, right? I don't know. Dominique Wilkins, jamtastic. Ayo. I haven't been to a Laker game, guys, in so long. I mean, I used to go see my Thunder when, like, Durant, all those guys were there. I, I went to a couple Laker Thunder playoff games. I'd go see them during the regular season. I haven't been to a Laker game in, what, seven years, maybe? Plus, I don't think I've ever... I don't think I can honestly say I don't think I've ever seen LeBron play live, so... Hopefully those guys are good until Sunday. <laughs> if not, then I'm just going to go see nobody's. LeBron. Sharif Cooper. Who wants to watch that? Watch who? Who wants to watch? Do you want to watch LeBron the GOAT, Joe P? Has more rings than the Suns will probably ever have? Come on, man. Come on. Show some respect. Kelly Olnick. Um, I, um, I, when I was younger, my sister was a big Laker fan, and I used to hate it because she was just so annoying. So when I was a little kid, I, uh, I tried to just find any other team to root for, and I, I started rooting for the Sonics because I love... I love the color green a lot, so I was a Sonics fan, and obviously all the Seattle customers that are listening are going to hate me, but yeah, I just stuck with Seattle for a long time until they left to Oklahoma City, so then I just left with them. You know, I know why there's hate, of course, for Seattle fans, but I, I didn't grow up that way, so. So. And yeah, I just stuck with them. Evan Mobley, purple. And we have a Santi Aldama, hot signature rookies for the Memphis Grizzlies. I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not that low, but I'm also not too high. So maybe, maybe. Maybe. David Johnson. And a Zion. Well, that's the one thing, Mark. I mean, I'm sure you've been a fan for a long time before all the championships. But yes, Golden State Warriors fans are just a perfect example. I mean, with anything. See, that's the one thing. I Everybody can hate on the Lakers. But Lakers tickets have always been expensive in LA. They've always been expensive. Like, you... <laughs> let me just tell you this. Alright. <laughs> This weekend, right? I think tomorrow, I want to say, 
The Grizzlies play the Clippers, right? My buddy is selling two tickets, Grizzlies Clippers, in the same seats that I'm going to, for seventy five bucks for the pair. Think about that, seventy five bucks for the pair. Now the tickets that I got on Sunday were two tickets for three hundred dollars. See the big difference, the big jump. That's the one thing I'll I'll, I'll say this about Laker fans is that Lakers fans they'll pay and they their tickets sell strong when whether they're winning or losing it doesn't matter now someone like the clippers who don't have the biggest fan base or let's say they're not winning they're even cheaper than anything and i guarantee you it was the same way for the warriors back in the day they were dirt cheap because nobody was going to see them it wasn't until they started winning chips and now look at how expensive they are now everybody wants to go to a golden state warriors game right Especially now they have a new arena, but even back at the Oracle, I'm sure people were still going. That's why their stock went up so crazy. Because they started winning. You know, at the end of the day, people are a lot of, there's a lot of bandwagoners out there. So, once their team starts winning, they will pay. Yeah, Sam. That's a good reason to be a Clipper fan. My sister and my brother-in-law used to have season tickets for Clippers, too. They won a Laker clip, uh, tickets, but they were just too expensive. You know, I, I I honestly can say too. I feel like Clipper games are much more entertaining for let's say a family, young crowd. They always have performances, people, all this and that. I want to say, I mean, I haven't been to Laker game in a little bit, but I want to say, I remember when I used to go to Laker games, it was pretty, pretty normal. Just you're here to watch the show, which is the game, not to watch performances, not to watch this. So it's like Clippers had to go above and beyond to sell tickets so that way people can come to their games. Or I feel like the Lakers, because they have a winning tradition, right? They have a winning tradition, and they're all about winning. So they just charge... Not that they charge expensive, but the resale is expensive. So And people will pay for it because they love the Lakers. Well, yeah, Pizzle, I think you're, you're bred different. <laughs> you're bred different. I think you're bred different. We, we know that. <laughs> Some people rather just watch it from their couch, which is cool. Especially now with HD and 4K and all the angles with cameras. I mean, I'm sure it's much better now to just watch it at home in the comfort of your house. I know if, if, the, if the Eagles played here in LA, I'd have season tickets like crazy. You know. I don't know. It's just something about watching sports live. It's just something else for me. I just I just love uh, live sports. Especially hockey games. Hockey games live are something else. It's always been the best out of all the sports I've seen live. College football games are much better than NFL games. I'll tell you that. That's fun. Alright. John Havlicek. McBride. Jalen Green. I think that's like the first Jalen Green I've seen. John Morant. Trey Mann. Well, that's the one thing, Tyler. You might not like hockey, so you can say that. But I'm just saying in general, if you don't like hockey at all, just because you don't want to learn it or take the time to learn it, go to a game live and that'll change your perspective. Eric Bledsoe. I agree with you. I think games are way better, but I think anything live is way better than in, in on TV. Davion Mitchell. Primo. Primo. Yeah, I think all the big rookies are in this. All of them. The only thing is that there's only one autograph per box. So, you're either going to get a rookie or you're going to get a veteran. In years past, there was two autographs per box, but this year it looks like there's only one. But also probably why the box is only $200. Josh Giddy. Keon Johnson. Tony Parker. 
Hot signatures. For the Spurs. Derek Gordon with that one. Jalen Green. Jalen Suggs. Donovan Mitchell. And we have a Killian Hayes to 75. Killian Hayes. Chris Paul. Katie Cunningham. Yeah, but see, Tyler, you like baseball probably more than you like hockey. I prefer watching a baseball game live. I think sometimes, to me, baseball gets boring on TV. In my opinion, see? <laughs> it just all depends on the sport that you like the most. LaMelo Ball. To me, baseball's too long of a season. That's why I don't think I invest my time into baseball. And especially being a Dodgers fan, I... why watch the regular season for? I already know they're going to make the playoffs, most likely. All that matters is the playoffs. I personally think baseball can be pretty boring sometimes, especially if there's no run scored. Kind of just like soccer, if it's just out there for minutes and, you know, any, so many innings of just scoreless. All right, last box, guys. The dude couldn't, uh, couldn't get out a thousand JKs before. The deadline. We could have signed it for him, Mark. That's what I'm saying, Tyler. So, I don't think anybody's wrong. I don't think I'm wrong or you're wrong. But what I'm saying is that if you love a sport more, you're going to obviously back it up a little bit more and say, no, you know, it's actually good both live and and in uh, on TV, you know. It's the same for me. I just personally love football the most with hockey, so I prefer those on TV more than I would, let's say, like baseball. Not trying to trash baseball, it's just my opinion, that's all. And like I said, Dodgers the last ten years or so. It's really just about playoffs. Uh I don't know if I've had any numbered cards or any rookies for those both of those teams, but autograph wise I think we've only had a Tony Parker. We've had Evan Mobley, um, Santi, Aldama, and Clippers, uh, Benoit, Benjamin. Alright, good luck. Yeah, I like this product. Nothing wrong with it. I think it's a great price point. Can't complain that it's only two hundred dollars. Rui Hachimura. Like I said, this will end up being uh, a big product down the line, especially if a lot of these rookies tend to end up being a really, really good players in the uh, NBA, um, because it'll be their first ever product with an NBA uniform. So people will always want to go back to this. Now, of course, Prism and those guys will probably resell the most, but if you want to be like technical about it. 
I want his first true NBA rookie card. It's going to be this product. You know? And we got for the Rockets, Ralph Sampson. Sampson. Brian with that one. Cool. No problem, Retro. I do wish it was two autographs, but... Josh Giddy. I love it, Riley. That's exactly what I wanted. It's exactly what everybody should have wanted. To 199, Charles Vassy. I think a lot of people don't. I don't think a lot of people would have loved if Fanatics started their own product. Now we can get Topps football. Now we can get Topps basketball back. Imagine all the endless possibilities with Tops. Cade Cunningham. That's just pretty much assuring you that Fanatics just wants their name in it. They're not trying to take over the sports cards market. They're just, they just want to be affiliated with it. That's all. And they're going to let Tops do what they're good at and create their own products. Bradley Beal, Franz Wagner, and his cancer highlights. And to 10, it's Kawhi Leonard for the Clippers. Looks really nice. 10 of 10. I think that's a zero gravity. Evan Mobley there. Jaden Springer. He's ripping Brady. What is he saying? I seen he was on a Bob Menery's pop podcast today. <laughs> that dude's had a wild like 48 hours. P. Maravich. We got to 99 Christian Wood. Luca Garza. Demontis Sabonis. LeBron with a Jalen Suggs. All right, guys. So there you go. That was the break. I don't think so, man. Like I told people, I don't, I don't, not every product has a case hit. If you want to consider what a case hit may be, is maybe the biggest rookie in the case would be the case hit, if you wanted to say that. But there, I don't think there's a specific insert or specific card you're looking for in every case. That's one per case. It's just all the same. I feel like Brady's put up a lot, though. I mean, maybe he has a little bit of a point, right, Mark? I feel like Brady's been very nice to him. Maybe because he does truly care that he needs help. But then also, like, he's so talented. I think that's the one thing that a lot of people uh, need to realize is that NFL kind of allowed him to do a lot. Much more than the average uh, NFL player. Stick around much more than the average NFL player because he's very talented. <laughs> NFL kind of created him. Should listen to that Emmanuel Acho podcast. It was pretty crazy. All right, there you go, guys. So that was the hit right there. Like I said, I probably penny seed a lot more than I should have, but just the top rookies and stuff like that. The majority of these will be top loaded. If not, they'll stay in penny sleeves. And also, actually, I have to look at some of these redbacks. But if I miss any redbacks, I'll go back and look at them really quick. But thank you, everybody. This was just number one. Obviously, number two is on the website. Uh, let's get the next one rolling. I don't think there's one per box, but there we got one right there.
I found two more Redbacks. Cool. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. This is number one. Number two's on the website. Wouldn't be surprised if it sold out already. Let's run it back. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com.